Hi, I'm Dave Vickers and welcome to the Photo Show. We're going to continue looking at the NIC collection uh, software plugins for Photoshop today. Um, if you haven't seen the previous videos, the NIC collection is a series of software plugins that work with both Lightroom and Photoshop. They're um, actually seven different pieces of software. Originally when they first came out they were retailing for about $500, uh, which is about £300. Then a couple of years ago Google bought the NIC collection reduced the price to $150, about £100. But as of March 2016, the NIC collection is now available to download completely free. So it's actually seven pieces of software that work within Photoshop and Lightroom, uh, and you can get it completely free. If uh, I'll put a link in the description for where you can download the uh, NIC collection from. And if you click the little uh, pop-up that's coming up now, that'll take you to my video which shows you how you can download and install the NIC collection uh, to work within Photoshop and Lightroom. So uh, what we're going to look at today is one of the plugins which is called Analog Effects Pro 2. And as the name suggests, it's it's actually giving you uh, analog looks to your images, you know, you know giving them film looks um, to the images that you've got to gi give them an aged or you know vintage kind of look. So I've chosen this photo here. It's of a um, uh, one of the war recreation guys dressed up, he was actually sleeping on his motorbike during the D-Day landings commemorations a couple of years ago. Um, and it's, it's a great shot, but it, it looks too modern. It looks very modern for the, the, the dress and the period that the image is. So let's put it into Analog Effects Pro and see what kind of things we can do with it. So here I've got my selection tool, Nick Selective tool. And you can see we've got all the different pieces of software and down here we've got Analog Effects Pro 2. So let's click that and it'll open a separate layer over the top of our background and now open the Analog Effects Pro window within Photoshop. Okay, so now the image is loaded up into Analog Effects Pro. What it's actually doing here is it's already applied a preset, what they, what they call in this, they call them recipes. So it's, a, it's a, a combination of filters to give an effect. And if you look over here on the uh, left hand side, it says at the top here, classic cameras. And below this you have a bunch of different recipes within the classic cameras menu. Now I've got to admit, the default one that opens up, Classic Camera 1, I really don't like. I don't think it does any image any favours. But what I suggest you do is, there's so many sort of options within here, is to use the recipes as a starting point and then uh, customise it yourself as you go along. So as you can see here, we're this is Classic Camera uh, number 1. And if you go down the little previews here, you can see, and we, let's let's choose one that we think... Now looking at it, I would say that possibly Classic Camera 4. So let's click Classic Camera 4 recipe. Let that load in. And there we go. It's already um, given a slight vintage look to the image. If you come across the top here, you've got some uh, options for how you view the image. At the moment it's on single image view. If you click this, you do what's called a split preview. And on the left hand side here you've got your original image and on the right hand side here you have the adjusted image. You can swoop this along so you can see exactly how the image is being affected. So you can see the difference between the two there. You could also flip it if you wanted to do a horizontal split. And then the other option here is you've got a side by side preview. So there's your original image on the top there's the adjusted image and you can flick that as well to be left to right rather than one on top of the other. Let's go back to the single image view. So basically what we've got here is it's uh, applied what they're calling a recipe and if you come over to the right hand side of the, of the panel now you can see that it's actually using one, two, three, four different filters to achieve this look. So if you open these up the first one here is basic adjustments and now within, once you drop that down, you've now got four other adjustments you can make. There's detail extraction, brightness, contrast, and saturation. Detail extraction works a little bit like um, the clarity slider within Lightroom and Camera Raw. So if you take it all the way down there, it kind of flattens the image out a little bit. Start to pull it the other way. 
and you, you're starting to get almost like a, a slight HDR kind of effect to the image, pulling out more details there. Brightness is fairly obvious. Brighten the image up, darken the image down. And you've got contrast, bump up the contrast a little bit, make a difference between the, the, the blacks and the whites within the image, and saturation. So if you pump it up that way, you're going to pump up the saturation, bring it down the other way, you're going to desaturate the image to give it a different look. So that's how these recipes work. They actually, um, if I switch now from, from uh, Classic Camera 4, let's switch it to number eight and you can see now that it's actually it, it's it's uh, changed the it, the filter types within it to give this effect so that's one option that you know and th there's so many things you can play with, with within these let's go back to classic camera 4 there's so many different things that you can play with, with within these recipes themselves. So you, you've got film types here. So it, it's it's picked a, a filter and you can go through the other filters and preview those and find something you like. I kind of like that one. I think it, it's, it's given it a nice edge to it. You've then got uh, neutral or faded, which is going to fade the... the contrast out a little bit and give it that more of an aged look to, to the actual image. Uh, you've got grain, so you can add grain to the image. If you click on zoom here, you'll zoom closer into the image. And you've got a little navigator here. And let's drop the grain. So the grain is per pixel. And you can see now as I'm dropping that down, it's adding grain into it. You've got a loop feature at the bottom here as well. If you click that, We've got a, a, a little loop window that opens that the cursor will follow. And you can see that it's added grain into the image. So it, we, we can make the grain really harsh or bring it back down and make it more subtle. So that's some of the options within the recipe set. Now, you have classic camera. If you click on this arrow here, you're going to open up into another window. On this side, you've got tools, which is all of the adjustments that you can use, all of the different filters that you can use to adjust your image. And on this side here, we have a bunch of tool combinations. We're in Classic Camera, so that's given us these options here on the left-hand side. But you can change these options. So let's go to Wet Plate, for example. So we click on that. And that's now going to change all of our recipes on this side. So let's click on wet plate three. It's going to take a while to load up because it's got all the different filters to apply to the image. There. Let's go back to the full image. You can see now if we if we do the split view. There's a lot of processing gone on to create this image to you know to give it this look. Um, Got to admit, it's giving it a bit of the the uh, American Civil War kind of look. But again, they they were shot on wet plates, so it's doing a good job. And you've got different filters here on this side here. You've got the basic adjustments again, but you've now got bokeh added to it, so you can adjust. Once you start to adjust that, you're, you're then going to get this target area. So you can choose where your area of focus is going to be. So let's bring it up to there. So we're keeping his face in focus. You can then adjust the width of the area that's being affected. The strength of the blur. And there we go. That's that's made a a, you know, a, a huge difference over the. Is if you click the compare button here, you'll go back to your original. Yeah, you know, the the difference that's made is quite incredible from the original image. So you've got tons of these to choose from. Uh, toy cameras is going to give you uh, like a, a something like a Holger look um, with distorted edges. Vintage cameras, you're getting more options there. Uh, Multi lens cameras. 
the multi lens will split the image up into stylized sections. So you got you got a triptych here of three different sections of the image, and you can when once you're in it choose to move around the image to get it set how you'd like it. I've got to admit, I don't think that's, this really works on, on this image. So that's basically the recipes. And they're really good starting points for um, playing around with uh, Analog Effects Pro. It'll give you a really good sort of starting point to go from to play with. But you can now, if we go back, and we'll go into Camera Kit. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to build our own camera just like it does in the, uh, the, the recipe. So if we remove all of the stuff that's on this and go back to an original image. We'll start off just by clicking basic adjustments so there, there's our original image and what we've done is we've added the basic adjustment slider to it so let's boost up the detail I'm going to bring the brightness down a touch add a little bit of contrast and take out some saturation So we click compare and just by using the one filter all we've done here is we've added one filter in to make these adjustments on this image so let's say we want to 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 build more into this let's uh, add some bokeh so you come across here to the bokeh if I just click bokeh it's going to replace the basic adjustment and uh, start again but if you can see here we've got a little plus sign next to it so we click the plus sign and now what we've got is our basic adjustment and our bokeh. So bokeh, 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 however you want to say it. So again, so let's move this. Let's have his, let's have the area of sharpness as where his head is. And you can adjust this. We'll widen it out a little bit. A little bit more like that. And adjust the blur strength a touch. So there, now we, we've we've we're building a, a a setting ourselves where we've we've used basic adjustments and bokeh. So we've added two filters to this in building our own camera around it. You can change the bokeh style from being the ellipse type to more of a tilt shift kind of effect. So let's do that. We've we've got the image there, so we can then widen this out a bit, widen the fade and I think I like that better than I did the the previous version so there's where we started two little adjustments and we've, we, we're starting to get where we want to go let's add something else into this now um, let's try light leaks so we're going to plus on light leaks now light leaks is, is You'll quite often see this in older film cameras where, as the name suggests, light has leaked in and uh, had an effect on the on the film within the camera. It's normally sort of a, a, a seal or a dent in the back of the camera has caused a little bit of light to get in and make an effect on the overall image. So with light leaks here, at the top we've got strength, so we can bring it down to, to zero and it's having no effect, and you can start to bring it in. and you can see it's having an effect on on the image now you can then choose to move it around where you want it so we've got loads of different options here and you can see each time you click it it's having a different effect on the image itself let's bring this central so we can And again, just experiment, go through, choose one that you like. I 
think I quite like that one for this image. Again, there's so many options within Analog Pro. It's really one of those programs where, you know, pick a photo, dive in, play around for a couple of hours, just see what kind of effects you can have. You know, you, you've got, uh, even within just the light leaks here, soft, crisp, dynamic, and each of those will, will have an effect on the image. So we can now move this light leak so it's just affecting that part of the area. We'll up the strength a little bit. It's adding a little bit of color cast because that's, you know, obviously light leaking into the camera is having an effect on, uh, would have had an effect on the film and changed the colors of the overall image. So that's where we started. It's a very modern, punchy looking image. And now we've managed to get of quite a vintage looking image. It, it, it looks like it was shot on an old camera. Um, let's add one more thing into this. Let's add a bit of film grain. So uh, we've got film type here. So we click film type and that'll allow add a film type in over the top of what we've been doing. If at any point you want to see um, what you know what these are like without the little tick next to each filter so if i tick that that takes it back to before i added the film type and that's the film type there you've also on this left hand side got an area that says history and you open that up and it will give you every single change that you have made this has done everything that i've done since i opened this image up within uh, analog effects pro so if you make changes that you're not happy with and you want to go back you can just go back to any particular point and change them. So, so you, you can go back to there. And the image will now revert back to the point where we were there and we'll go back to the end there. And that's back where we, where we started just now. So, film type, let's drop it down. Again, we've got the choices of the, the different filters that we can add over the top. So we could play through those and see which one we like the best. Right, I think that it started there. I think I like that. I think it's it, it, the the green within the the filter the, the, that's being used is adding to the image, and again you can add a bit more strength into that or fade the image out a little bit more. Let's give it a slightly more faded look, and once again you can add grain to the image. So let's zoom in on this. You can choose your zoom amount. So let's zoom in a hundred percent this time. And you've got your little navigator here. So if we close in there and grain per pixel. So the more you bring this down, the more pronounced the grain is going to be within the image. So you're really you know, simulating the look of film. And the grain's good. It, it doesn't look that fake. It, it, it's very similar to film grain. You can change whether it's a hard edge grain or a softer edge grain. And again, if you want to return any of these sliders back to their default, if you just double click on the uh, slider itself, it will move back to where the default setting is on this image. So let's zoom back out. And you can see what we've actually done here is we've built our own camera, very similar to the recipes that were available in the, um, the, 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 the different tool combinations, the classics and stuff like that. And what we can do now is we can actually save this. So if we click save, we'll get a little box. So let's say um, vintage, let's call this vintage faded. Vintage faded one click OK and now in our custom settings you can see now we have vintage faded one so I can if I want to go all the way back and if I, if, if I want to apply this effect to another image import the image click vintage faded and it will do all of the adjustments that we've made to this image to that image 
So there's an awful lot you can do with uh, analog effects mode. This is really just one aspect of what I'm doing. Yeah, I, I've taken a photo that looked like it was shot on a modern digital camera and made it look more like it was shot on an, an old film camera and it has you know a lot of the aspects that that would have next thing you want to do is just click OK at the bottom there that will take you back into Photoshop if you want to continue working on your image and you can see it's opened up it's a separate layer over the top of the original image so if I turn that off that's where we started a little bit of playing in Analog Effects Pro and that's what we've ended up with so it's a really massive uh, piece of software you know how much you actually use it and you know if, if you're shooting weddings and stuff like that I'm sure you know people are looking for a vintage kind of look to their images it's a it's a really powerful tool so what I would suggest is you know open up some images within Analog Effects Pro make yourself a cup of tea or coffee and sit and play and just you know start to familiarize yourself with the, the different things you can do within the in the program so I'm gonna end it there that was uh, Analog Effects Pro 2 in the Nick collection. I hope this has been helpful. I'm Dave Vickers. This is a photo show. Until next time, see you then.